All right. Well, welcome back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. You are listening to the Dr. Luis Sandoval Show. Today, we are talking about what is our mindset? What is it that we're thinking about? I saw this movie. It was pretty cool. Helped me think about the mindset more than anything else. Called Nefarious, for those of you who are just joining us. Um, And it's really an interesting movie about a psychiatrist who has to go interview a man who is demonically possessed. man happens to be in jail. I'll let you go watch a movie to see what that conversation was about. But really what I don't want any of our listeners to do is come out of that movie with a mindset of what did the devil say or what did the devil not say? Why? Well, let's go back to the beginning. You know, I had a few people ask me, well, what does curiosity, how do I know if I'm seeing a movie out of curiosity? You know, should I go see this movie or not? The real question I have is, is this movie, is going to see this movie or really any action in your life, whether it be seeing this movie or hanging out with family or whatnot, is this bringing me closer to Christ or not? If there's ever any doubt, ask yourself that. If I'm going to go do something, should I do it or not? How is this bringing me closer to God? In other words, do I trust God enough that if I don't do this, whatever it is, whatever inkling I have, everything's going to be okay and God's going to take care of stuff. Do I truly believe that? Have I prayed for that? You know, we go back to Genesis. This is, this is the bottom line. This is where we start seeing curiosity. And this is where I tell people, you know, a lot of people really get wrapped up in, I need to read every book on demonic possession and things along those lines. Um, the reality is this, let's listen to Genesis chapter two, verse 17, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. That's a quote from God. You know, who said that line? God. Let's read it again. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil for what you eat from it. You for excuse me, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. <clears throat> what is it that we're not supposed to eat? What is it that we're not supposed to come in intimate knowledge of? What is it that we're not supposed to ingest? Knowledge of good and evil. Obviously, we're supposed to know good. God created Adam and Eve. He's talking to them. God is all good. God is all love. <clears throat> there is no time we're not supposed to know what is good. However, we're never supposed to be able to contrast that with what is evil. We're not supposed to have knowledge of evil. Um, and that's also, that's a lot of times how we know that we're just doing things out of curiosity. I want to know a little bit more about the devil. Why is this going to bring you closer to God? Is this because the more I know about that, the worse, the the, the sicker it is, the knowledge that I gain, the closer I may be to Christ. Not necessarily. I think that the devil is really good at entertaining, uh, looking exciting, you know, the knowledge of good and evil, because what happened after this serpent shows up to Eve, shows her the fruit and twists everything around and says, Hey, look at this. It says that Eve found it good to eat. She found it appealing, right? So he tells Adam this. Eve is confronted by the uh, snake, and all of a sudden, things look good. You know, what God said kind of goes by the wayside. That's what I worry about for myself and for anybody. You go see this movie, and all of a sudden, we kind of start saying, hey, no, I, I need to learn about this. I need to know about this. And the reality is, that's not the truth. The truth is, we don't need to know about that. <clears throat> is this going to bring me closer to God? I would say this. <clears throat> Once you've seen evil, you kind of don't want to know anything about it. Once you've truly seen what the devil is and and what demonic is and what hell is. You don't want to know anything about it. I can tell you this from a psychiatric perspective. In fact, you know, when you deal with say, uh, if I were to tell anybody, would you ever want to go to jail and interview somebody who is a murderer, child molester, uh, rapist of young children, kills young children, tortures young children, innocent kids who might say, did I do something wrong? when they were kidnapped, something along those lines. And all they want to do is go back to mom and dad. And this person is really enjoying going over there and hurting this little innocent being. Do you want to even know? It's like, Dr. Sandoval, don't even talk about that. Why are you talking about that? That's going to ruin my day. That's disgusting. I don't want, I want to be furthest away from that as possible. I don't want to hear about such crimes. Well, that's just what the person, this is what a human being could do, the potential of a human being to commit a heinous crime uh, and do that under the influence of who? That sounds certainly not Jesus. Well, if you don't want to hear about that, why in the world would you want to hear about the devil? Because that's pretty much what the devil is. 
when we look at that, when we look at these levels of crime, uh, when we look at the crime in the world, when we look at the biggest atrocities in the world, that's what the devil is. He's just not going to show you that right away on the surface. On the surface, you're going to get the entertaining part. You're going to get the part where the fruit looks good, but then you're going to get lured in. And before you know it, you're in this filth, the sewage that normally we would say, I want to get as far away from that as possible. That's what I want our listeners to really understand. When we start thinking about deliverance and how do I fight the devil and how do I get out of there? <clears throat> the only way to do that is, well, let me focus on Jesus. Let's start focusing on Jesus. So that was one thing that I realized about the movie. You know, it's a good movie. It's a great dialogue. But when you get in there, the movie is called Nefarious and it's focused on, you know, the demon and demonic possession and what the demon's doing. And in fact, if you see the movie, this doesn't spoil anything. You know, the priest comes in and when you see the interaction, it's, it's interesting to see that interaction because initially uh, you're expecting something to happen, which I thought was kind of cool. And then all of a sudden it just doesn't. And, and if you go see the movie, you'll see what I mean. Um, you know, the priest comes in and I expected, oh, okay, this is going to get interesting. Uh, and the priest is there for about a minute and then walks away. <clears throat> There's uh, the devil is tickled pink um, about that because he realized, hey, I'll just say this. There's a lack of faith going on. And with that, the devil is very much at ease and says, oh, perfect. You got to remember this, folks. Without faith, God can't work through us. And this is what starts to happen. And I should say without faith in God, we start to read about this and we start to focus more on what's the devil doing. Ah, guess what? Where's our faith going to go? What's what's our heart being filled with? Is this so that I see this and I realize how great God is? That's totally cool. Now I can see how great God is and I can my faith can increase. And now I don't have to worry about this filth and the sewage, right? Think about the worst crimes possible when you start thinking about, yeah, I'm, sure, I'm going to read about the demonic. No, not really. Well, Dr. Sandoval, you work in deliverance, so you have to read about the demonic. Yeah, from an academic perspective, I read about it, but definitely not. I don't want to know more than I need to. You know, if the devil said this during some kind of a deliverance session or if you, I ever hear a priest say, well, the devil said this, anything other than what their name is. That's why it's important. The movie is important as far as the name. You know, this devil is called Nefarious. So that's that's pretty, uh, um, the name will tell you something. Um, so that's important as far as you want to know what the demonic name is just to get rid of them because the name has a lot of power and control. And what I ask for that is this. If you do go see this movie, here's what the mindset I would have. Okay. So the demon says his name's Nefarious. That name was changed from whatever his angelic name was uh, in heaven. Okay. After the fall, right? All the angels fell. They all had different names. We know that Lucifer, uh, who was obviously the bearer of light, um, fell. A lot of people say Lucifer went to Satan or to um, <clears throat> um, you know, uh, Beelzebub, whatever it is that the name changed into. I've heard different versions of that, but it used to be Lucifer, now no longer called Lucifer. Okay, the angels fell and now somebody has to take their place. Who's going to take their place in heaven? Technically speaking, we're going to be taking their place in heaven. God created us and now all of a sudden there's this rage against us because we're supposed to take their place in heaven. My question to you is, if you go see this movie and you see what this, what once was an angelic being became and got this name called Nefarious, my question is, what's our supernatural name going to be? That's the question I want to, I want to leave that movie thinking, well, what's God going to call me? What am I being called to? Is God going to call me um, Peacemaker? Is God going to call me humility? Is God going to call me? I hope so. I hope I get an angelic type name, a heavenly name, shall I say, uh, because that means that I'm doing something right. What's God calling me to do in this world? Is God calling me to learn more about the demonic or is God calling me to learn a little bit more about heaven? What's my mindset here? And really um, think about what is it that when, you know, when the time comes for our death and resurrection, what name am I going to hear Jesus call me by? And I'm going to know that name. I'm going to know he's calling me. No different than when we call our kids. If I call out to one of my kids and I say their name, obviously I've been repeating that name to them their whole life. I gave them a name and my wife and I gave them a name. And <clears throat> as soon as I say it, they're going to turn and look because they know that's them. And they know mom and dad are talking to them and that's them. When I die, what's my name going to be? I'm going to turn to it because Jesus already gave us that, given us that name. But what am I working towards? What name am I building up? Or what name do I think I'm supposed to have? Am I living up to that name? Or am I living up to a different name? I hope I'm not living up to the name of greed. You know, I would hate to get to the pearly gates and all of a sudden they say, oh no, your name is avarice. You're going to have to go the other way. Gosh, what name am I building up? That's one thing that I thought about. Uh, you know, you get into the mindset of the movie and it's like, 
hmm, what's this movie really trying to tell me? Is my focus on the devil or am I getting closer to God? The other question is this. A lot of times people want to see this because for entertainment value, Hollywood's amazing. Movies are amazing. Special effects are amazing. They're always really cool. You know, we see movies where really anything can happen nowadays, especially you do computer graphics, things along those lines. But the reality is you go into deliverance session and people always ask things like, did you ever see anybody levitate? Did you ever see, have you heard people speak different languages? And we love to hear these stories. Right. All of a sudden you hear about a deliverance session and you want to know, oh, yeah, I saw this and this is totally out of the realm of the natural. It was totally supernatural. The person's eyes change color, their face change demeanor. Uh, they start to slither on the ground like a snake. All these things are very entertaining, shall I say, because that's what the devil wants to do. And it piques our curiosity. Well, here's my real question. Well, if the demonic with a broken angelic nature Remember, they still kept their angelic nature, but now it's broken, can do that. What can my guardian angel do? You know, at what point am I actually waking up and turning to my guardian angel and saying, wow, I have a guardian angel who's guarding me. I can, you know, that's one of the things that if, if you go watch this movie, you're going to realize it does, again, this doesn't uh, spoil anything, but, you know, the psychiatrist goes in there to interview. The psychiatrist is an atheist, but... That being said, the movie doesn't even touch on this. He's not going in there thinking, well, I should pray to my guardian angel. Um, God's protecting me. I'm faced with a demonic here and I have no fear whatsoever because whatever I've done in my life, whatever sins I've done, I'm repenting for, trying to get closer to God. I'm asking my guardian angel to protect me along the way. Uh, I'm praying every day. I'm turning my my heart, mind, and soul to the uh, heavenly realm. And I'm asking for protection from heaven every day as I try to get closer to God. If that's the case, guess what, folks? We're going to be confronted with evil things as that's what's going to happen. And we're not going to fall into those traps, at least not always, sometimes once in a while. But the bonus is this. Let's say we fall into the trap. What's the first thing that's going to happen? The devil's going to mock you. Any of us, really. You know, we fall into sin. They're going to mock you and they're going to say, we got gotcha. you. Yeah, but you know what? Everything's possible with God. And if my mind is not in that mindset, and I say, yeah, I fell, but I better run right back to God. I better be that prodigal son. Run right back and say, God, your will be done. I messed up. Help me out here. You know, this is, if you ask any of the theologians, Adam, when God said, Adam, what happened? What's going on down there? I don't see you. You're hiding. What's going on? He didn't say, gosh, I'm really sorry we fell. He turned and blamed Eve. And Eve turns and blames the, the serpent. But had Adam just said, you know what? We messed up. God's mercy would have been right there. God would have said, okay, let's fix this. We need to know that. We need to have that mindset. Let's look at Bible, a great Bible verse, Mark chapter 10, verse 27. Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all, all things are possible with God. Nothing's impossible with God. We got to remember that. If we can remember the words of Christ, then we'll never be afraid. We're going to talk more about this after the break. 